Hello everyone, this is Chris with the Ancient Scholar. This is just a basic introduction to the periodic table of elements. I'm going to be using a new application on my iPad uh, known as Screen Chomp. Uh, that's Chomp as in C-H-O-M-P. Uh, this is something I uh, actually was just recently introduced to today uh, when I had to go, when I went to actually went to a a, a clinic, or a workshop for uh, college instructors and professors and so on on um, new uh, mobile 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 technologies, um, mobile learning technologies, specifically uh, using the iPad, and this is one of the applications that we used. It is a free download, and um, I, I really enjoyed using it at the workshop. And now I'm actually going to start using it um, to try to make some videos, and we'll kind of see how it goes. So what I want to do is I just want to talk about some of the, the real basic uh, components of the periodic table of elements. This will probably be a, a several part series um, eventually. Let me just go ahead and choose a, a nice color. Uh, we'll start off with red here. Okay, so the periodic table of elements is uh, broken into um, basically um, vertical and horizontal uh, components. Okay, so the, the vertical components here are called columns and these vertical columns are known as groups okay and you can see that I uh, drew a circle around the group and we'll go ahead and select another color uh, but a nice green here not purple we'll just select purple uh, so those are groups and then my rows which are horizontal go like this okay my rows my horizontal are known as periods. Okay, and that's actually where the periodic table of elements comes from. So I have um, my vertical columns known as groups and my horizontal rows known as periods. Okay, so let's just go ahead and uh, erase all that stuff there and we'll talk about what, uh, what it means to be in a group or a period. Let's go ahead and talk about our groups first of all. If you notice, uh, there is a number above every group. Uh, again, a group is um, a column. So let's. I'm just going to draw a box around this group here. And I'm going to draw a little circle, and you can see that that is group 1A. Uh, the 1 is what's most significant for us. I'm going to draw a box around this one here in a circle, and that is group 2. Um, if we go all the way over here to the right, I'm going to draw around this one in a circle, and you can see that is a 5, a five 6, 7, 8. So this is group 1 here, this is group 2, and this is group 8 over here. Now, what is significant about a group is a group Okay. A group tells us the number of valence valence electrons. Okay, so a group one element such as hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, um, and so on have one electron in their valence. Okay, and this is going to this is important uh, when we talk about the chemical properties of these elements and whether and how kind of how they bond and what kind of bonds they create. Um, so that's the number of electrons in their valence shell, and of course we know the valence shell is the outermost shell um, of electrons, um, and it is the shell that is uh, involved in chemical bonding for the most part, um, unless we. Uh, it, well, I won't get into that right now, but uh, so our group two elements over here, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, radon, or radium, excuse me, um, all have two electrons in their valence, okay? If we go all the way over to the right, our group eight um, elements all have eight electrons in their valence with the exception of helium. Helium is the only exception and the reason that we put helium in group eight is if you remember something called the octet, the octet rule, um, the octet rule is just a general rule of thumb and it tells us if this is a valence shell here, if we can get eight, I'll draw the little electrons here, um, eight electrons in that valence shell, the atom will be happy, it won't really want to bond. 
Um, neon has eight, argon has eight, krypton, xenon, and radon all have eight electrons in their valence shell. Helium only has two, but um, if we remember the S shell, the 1S shell specifically, um, which helium is in, the 1S shell can hold only hold a maximum of two electrons. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. Just know that helium, at this point, just know that helium is very special, and helium is happy at two electrons, and it acts just like an element that has eight electrons, okay? So all the elements in this um, group here are what we call the noble gases. They don't um, react with anything. Okay, so that's what the group tells us, the number of electrons in the valence shell. The period tells us something very different. So we'll do kind of a light green here. The period, if you look here, I have uh, on my period, I'll circle the period, I have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 here, okay? Um, so this would be period 1, period 2, obviously not that, that's just an example. Period 3, period 4, period 5, period 6, period 7. Um, <clears throat> these guys here, the lanthanides and the actinides, um, we actually just kind of pulled them. If you can see, I'll draw an, yeah, maybe I'll different color here. Uh, we'll, I'll choose red. Um, if you see, uh, this row goes here and this row goes here. So this is actually a 6 and this is a seven. We just kind of pull those out of the periodic table and put them down here. Otherwise, our periodic table would, would be really, really long and it'd be kind of hard to, to fit into one page. Okay, so what the period, what these numbers mean, these numbers tell us how many shells of electrons I have around the nucleus. So if we go up the very top here, period one, that includes hydrogen and helium. Um, if this is the nucleus here, um, in this case, in, in these in these atoms, these elements, I only have one shell, one shell of electrons. Okay. Uh, however, if we look at let's go down to period two, that includes all of these guys here: lithium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, fluorine and neon, they all have two shells. Um, so if you can imagine this is the nucleus, and here's my first shell, and here's my second shell. Um, sometimes we call these N equals one, and the outer N equals two, okay? So that's what that's telling us. There are two shells of electrons, and of course the outer shell is the valence shell, okay? So let's move on to three here. Okay, so group three again, that just means um, that we have the, you know, the nucleus here, we have one, two, three shells of electrons, with the outer shell being the, the valence shell. Um, four shells, five shells, six shells, and seven shells. Okay guys, so this that was just a basic introduction to the periodic table of elements. Um, there'll be more videos to come. Hopefully you guys found this, this new format kind of interesting and, and hopefully it works out. And uh, if you're watching this video, then it means that I was able to get to work with YouTube. Um, as always, thanks for hanging in there.